The ADP releasing its report on private payrolls in May, saying that 978,000 jobs were added versus the 680,000 that was expected. So the market, how do you believe that it's interpreting this data in comparison to the other jobs data that we got? Well, I think it's all positive. Um, you know, even last month when we saw you know, unemployment actually you know, didn't come, go down as everyone expected. We thought a million jobs were going to be added, and it was something like 250,000 jobs, like a complete bust. And by the time the market opened, you know, the market had gotten past that news pretty, pretty quickly. So you know, I think even depending on how the numbers come out tomorrow, they're talking about something like 670,000 jobs added in the economy. You know, weather comes in better than expected, as expected, less than expected. I think the bottom line is we know the economy's heating up. It's no secret. And really, by the end of the year, my concern is, and I think a lot of strategists and economists' concern is, are we going to actually have a labor shortage? Because you're already seeing a problem where companies can't find workers. Now, some of it has to do with the fact that that stimulus check is going to keep coming in until September. You know, some states are going to start to uh, opt out of that over the summer. So a lot of workers are going to have to go back to work. But I think the bigger problem here is you've got an economy that's going to run super, super hot, you know, the fastest growing economy since the early 80s. And at, by the end of the year, you know, the question is going to be, uh, are we going to have are we going to have essentially wages just keep continually going higher because we can't get enough people to work? And the problem with that is at the end of the day, it's inflationary. That's a lot. Okay, and so can we take a look at some of the ADP numbers sector by sector? Leisure and hospitality that led the way, 440,000 jobs added. Education and health services, 139,000. Transportation and utilities, 118,000. You saw professional and business services added 68,000. And we can go down the line. Which of these do you think has even more room to grow at this point in time? I think it's, I mean, leisure and hospitality, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the economy is not fully open right now, um, but that's going to continue to change as we get into summer. As more of us get vaccinated, as all those restrictions start to lift, um, and it just that pent up animal spirits, right, that we all have right now to go out and, and literally go on trips. I think everyone I've talked to, just anecdotally this summer, is doing some sort of trip where they're flying somewhere, they're going to be in their car. Um, and that's also why, like, from an investment perspective, you know, you've got to have the right portfolio that's going to benefit from the fact that we do have this great reopening happening. And we're starting to see cyclical stocks really outperform. And that's really started to happen since last year in November when that vaccine news. So, you know, really the economic landscape is changing quick. Uh, and the stock market told you this six months ago. OK, and so weekly jobless claims also showing some positive signs for the first time since the early days of the pandemic. Less than 400,000 Americans have filed for unemployment benefits. When do you think we could start seeing these numbers reach pre-pandemic levels? I mean, I'm really bullish on it. I think by the fall, we're going to be talking about labor shortages. We're not going to be talking about we getting everybody back to work. Um, you know, literally, if you look at, um, you know, essentially jobless claims are down 30 percent over the last month. That's just going to keep dropping precipitously here. So I just think through the summer, it's just the news going to get better and better. Um, and again, you know, because the market essentially is a, it really looks into the future. It's been telling us that for a long time now, that things are just going to get unbelievably better. And we're here. It's happening right now, right in front of us. Okay. And so as we're taking a look at this graph and, and we can see exactly how the jobless claims have, have tailed off and gotten us to this point, of course, we are still above some of the pre-pandemic averages. And so with that in mind, as we think about the states, the different reactions that they've put in place, uh, you talked about we're going to be facing a labor shortage. Uh, there are currently some pockets of the employment situation that are seeing labor shortages. Do you think some of the states that have rolled back unemployment benefits have been successful in doing so? And, and if not, why then? No, I think absolutely, because the problem is if you keep the benefits going and it doesn't incentivize you to go back to work, I mean, how many companies right now are having trouble hiring, right? I mean, look at McDonald's. They're giving you $50 just to come to the interview. So I think, you know, getting those benefits or opting out of those benefits earlier is probably better because it gets more people back to work. It gets companies, you know, being able to hire and able to service all that new business coming in. And that's the best thing for the economy, right? You don't want people on unemployment. You want people working, being productive. Um, and invariably, the quicker you make that happen, the better. And I think this all leads, roads lead to one place. And that's, you know, down the line later this year, because wages are going up, because everyone's going to go back to work, 
that wage inflation is real, even more so than the fact that commodities, we know that they've been going through the roof and we've had a lot of inflation because raw material costs have gone up. But employment costs, that's the real kicker. And that's why I think inflation here isn't transitory, transitory like the Fed says, it's here to stay. And you know, from the perspective of investing your portfolio right now, and you can check this out on my podcast, I talk a lot about this, go to bebullish.com, is you've got to position your portfolio for inflation. And it's not something that's not going to be transitory. It's going to be around for a long time. And I think this labor, you know, all, all the things going on with labor right now really fit into that narrative. And the biggest concern we have is labor costs are going to go up. Everybody's going back to work. And you've got to be positioned for it. Let's talk about bird watching. Fed, uh, the Fed, we're going to be keeping an eye on them to see if they are more hawkish or dovish in their tone and their tenor and how that changes. Do you expect that? Uh, where do you expect that? to play out as a result of some of the inflationary concerns that you were mentioning? Yeah, if inflation runs hot, and as you can tell, I think it is, I think they're going to have to change their language a lot quicker. Um, you're, you're seeing a lot of strategists and economists talk about, you know, maybe even talking about tapering by the fall um, and maybe even starting to raise interest rates early next year. I think that's highly probable. And I think the Fed could change their position on a dime here. So don't let Jay Powell fool you. Even though he's talking about the fact that we've got a long way to go, they can change their tune very, very quickly. And I think they will because it's kind of hard to ignore all the inflationary pressures that are out there. You can't ignore the purple elephant in the room forever.